In this lecture, you are going to learn how to build a responsive grid system from scratch. A grid system typically allows us to easily position elements on the web page. This is because it helps us to divide the web page into different columns. If you actually look at some of the responsive frameworks that we have today, like Zob Foundation, say Zob Foundation Grid Classes. Right, so I'm going to open this. Right, so let's just scroll down a little bit. This is actually a grid system. Foundation grid system divides the entire web page into 12 columns. We are going to see how to do this later. When we come here, you can see how things are positioned in a grid system. For example, the first row that we have here as 444, four, four, which means the first boss that we have here is taking up four columns. The second one is taking up four columns and then the third one is taking up four columns. Why for the second row, the first box is taking up three columns, the second one six columns and then the last one three columns. And then the same thing repeats down here. You can see here we have just two columns first one is six and then the second one is six so the grid system actually allows us to position things on the screen the way that we want them to be positioned without the grid system it's very difficult for us to achieve this kind of arrangement on the screen all right so we're going to be doing something similar but a bit simpler than what we have here but you are actually going to be able to understand how things are put together eventually because if we say that the entire screen width is 100 percent and then we want to actually have a grid system of 12 columns it means that we are actually going to divide by 100 so if i bring out a calculator here and then say 100 divide by 12 this is equal to 8.33 so this actually is one column and then times two right so 16.6 is actually two column right so this is actually what we are going to do eventually I'm going to have my calculator on one side and then we are just going to build up the grid system that we're going to be using for this small project right back again to my test editor and then shared underscore style dot css going to collapse this and this and this and this right let's just collapse all of this the naming convention that we're going to use for our grid system is entirely up to you if you go back again to the foundation website you can see here they use large dash six okay so small dash six and then we also have something like medium it actually depends on you you can use any naming style that you actually decide to use for your project all right okay so let's get back again to our test editor so for the grid system that we want to build i want to use this naming convention i want to call this column dash lg dash one so this is going to be for large screen so i'm saying column lg-1 should have a width of 8.33 like we saw just now when i did the division so this is 8.33 and it should be percentage right don't forget we divide 100 by 12 we have 8.33 by the time we multiply this by 2 we are going to have 16.66 so i can just duplicate this and then make this 16. Point six six and then i call this lg2 same thing for the next one so this is going to be 25 then we can call this three and then the next one is going to be four and then this is going to be three three point three three right so you can actually just take your calculator and do the division 12 divided by 100 multiplied by 4 you are going to get something in this range next for 5 this is going to be 41.66 41.66 and then for 6 this is going to be 50 percent right so remember 66 six will be equal to 100 percent so if i have two columns with column lg6 column lg6 this is going to be 100 percent of the entire screen seven is going to be 58.33 so we just take this and move it down 
58.33 and then 8 this is going to be 66.66 so still the same pattern okay and then 9 is going to be 75 so this is 9 then this is going to be 75 percent of the entire screen and then 10 this is going to be 83.33 And then 11 is going to be 91.66. And then 12 is going to be 100%. All right, so all what we have here is only going to be used on a large screen. That's why I actually include the LG here. So we are going to put this inside of a media query. So I'm going to say media, screen, and then I'm going to target large screen. So I'm going to say and the minimum device width in this case, minimum device width should be 1024 px. So at this breakpoint, we want to include all of this. Right, so when the minimum device width is 1024 px, we want this style rules to actually take effect. All right, so I'm just going to move this one down a little bit. Maybe we just also move this one down. And then place it here. Okay, so I want to copy everything here and then move it down to tablet. So we're going to change this to medium, right? Column MD for medium screen. So we're going to just replace all of this. So this will be applicable for only medium screens. Okay, so right now we have both large and medium screen setup. But for small screen, what we want to do is when the device width is less than 768 pixels, we want to make the column 100%. And it will be very tiresome for us to target each of all of these one after the other. So if I say column MD1 on T12 and then column LG-1 on T12, that will be 24 times I need to do that. So we can actually use a CSS selector, the white card selector to actually target all of this. Okay, so we can say any class that begins with column dash. We want to target it and on the small screen, we want to make their width 100% by default. Right, so let's do that now. Come outside of this. Let's put it at the top here. So by default, all of the columns that we'll be using, if they're not in the category that we define, here we have 768, and then here we have 1024. Less than 768, we want it to be 100%. So we just say here width should be 100%. And then here we are going to put a white cut. We want to look for a class and then we can use the asterisk symbol to say this is a white card search and then we are looking for whatever is going to be inside of this code. In our case, this is going to be column dash. So anything that is column dash, okay, we want to look for it and then make the width 100% on small screens. Okay, so I'm just going to move these comments to the top here. So group this for small screens. And then here will be for tablets. So we are going to target tablets. Okay. And then the last one will be for large screens. All right, we're just going to test this out and see if everything works correctly. Come here, we want to create a div. This will be like a container for the columns that we want to create. So this will be a div. And then we set the class to column. Let's say we want this to be nine columns on a large screen. And then on a medium screen, we want this to be six columns. So let's say column dash MD dash six. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this. The next div here, this is going to be three columns, and then this is also going to be six. So if you look at this closely, what we have here, for this first div, we are saying we want nine columns on a large screen. We want six columns on a medium screen. 
and then for the second div we want three columns on a large screen and then we want six columns on a medium screen so let's see here large nine medium six okay let's grab this and then come here say large three medium six all right let's just do a reload on the browser okay here we have large nine and then medium six large three and then medium six you can see here that the element are stacking on top one another this is the default behavior of a div in order to override this we need to float the element to the left so let's come again to our test editor then our style sheet so probably here we want to float that element to the left so we are going to say float left by default and then maybe we are going to give padding so let's say padding i'm going to say top and bottom 10 pixels right and left 15 pixels right so let's refresh the browser right now you can see that things are arranged properly you can see the column that have large nine it's filling onto this particular area we can see this clearly if we give borders so let's come to our html and for now let's just add code a border here say border one pixels solid red and then we do the same thing for the other one but this time we want this to be green right let's refresh the browser okay so now you can see that nine is from here until here let's now see how this will look on a medium and small screen so we can actually just use the built-in responsive design for chrome you can you can see now that it's adjusting for medium screen which is 6.6 6, if you look at the html code for the medium screen we said 6.6 6 for both of the dev that we have here so for small screen we expect this to be 12 so let's come back and say small screen to small so drag it down you can see now that the dev is collapsing on top one another all right so this tells me that everything is working fine correctly according to the grid system that we have built now so with this we know that the grid system that we have built is actually working correctly we can now specify the number of columns that we want for a specific div but there are a few more things that we need to do to clean up this because we are using float remember from the previous lecture when i taught you about float there's something that needs to come along with float which is actually clear let me just give you a quick illustration before we apply a fix let's come again to our test editor come to index.html right i'm going to create a different container here let's call this dev and then here we are just going to put a paragraph let's have a paragraph here and just put a test i am testing to see the bug from float save this and then come again to the browser right so let's just do a reload you can see right now that there are some unwanted spaces here that we did not actually add this is because we are using the float property it is beginning to because the rows are floating to the left and and then they are actually taken out of the flow of the main page so what we need to do is to add a style to actually clear the floats for this particular dev. So an easier way to do that would be to actually always group our columns in a row. So if we come back to our HTML, see right here, I have a dev here. We are going to make this the grouping for our columns. We call this role. And then inside of our style, we are going to target role. And then say after role immediately after any element that we apply the class rule to we want to actually do some setting operation the first one is to set the content to be empty string so we're going to say content should be empty and then we want to set the display to be table and lastly we want to clear everything so we're going to say clear both right and left 
okay so we can now do a reload on our page let's see the difference see that once we apply that the div is actually taking the right shape that we want it to have in our page so that will be all for this lesson in the next lecture we will continue from here